Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you guys are doing good this morning and uh, thanks for tuning into the channel. And man, I've got a special bait modification tip for you today. And this is one that's probably, it's, it's probably going to be the most uh, uh, informative, mo most profound modification that I'm going to do on all these baits. And it's the one that I really did not want to talk about. And I, you know, I've had a couple of buddies, uh, you know, give me a call and text me and say, Hey man, why are you giving all these secrets away? You know, cause I, so much of this stuff I've, I've just kept secret for 30 plus years, you know, as a tournament angler, as a competitor, you know, I felt that, you know, I, and I think a lot of pros do, you know, we just don't want to give up our secrets because these secrets that we've developed and learned have come at a high cost. It, it's come with years and years on the water, sacrifices, frustrations, experimentation. So uh, to be able just to give them up is a, is a difficult thing to do. But ever since I've had the, the opportunity to work with Johnny Schultz at Fish the Moment and develop my own YouTube channel, that sort of, that allows me to be able to give these tips away more freely because you know, if we're being compensated in other ways besides tournament winnings, then it all equals out. And also it helps everybody else catch some more fish. So that's sort of the reason that I'm doing it right now. So uh, like I said, if you guys enjoy these tips that I'm giving, you know, I'd really appreciate if you, you know, subscribe to the channel, like the videos. That's all I ask because that's sort of a, a good trade-off, I think. So anyway, I'm going to talk today about floating worms and I don't talk much about floating worms because it's one of my, you know, it's one of my sort of babies, one of my key, you know, techniques that I've done really good in. Um, I've, I've done really good on floating worms in tournaments. Um, even though history doesn't show it, I actually won the Bassmaster Megabucks tournament back in the early 90s that Tommy Biffle wound up winning because if, it, if that tournament, I, I finished third in that tournament, but if that tournament would have been a total weight tournament, I'd have won the tournament on a floating worm, but it was a cut deal where they cut down to zero and you went into those final holes. But if it had been a four day tournament with your total weight, I'd have blown that mega bucks tournament away on nothing but a floating worm. And I've had a lot of other tournaments where I've had high finishes on it too. So I'm, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go through the modification that I make on the bait. Um, I'm going to show you how I rig it, which is a, another secret. And, uh, in later videos, I'm going to I'm going to talk more about how to fish it and the areas to look for and, you know, different colors and that type of stuff, but that'll be for a different video. Today, I just want to give you the modification tips and how I rig the thing. So anyway, let's get, let's get started here. Um, first of all, the bait, um, I use, and I've experimented with a lot of different ones. I use nothing but zoom trick worms for my floating worms. I think they're the best bait that you can have for a floating worm. They come in a lot of different colors. I prefer the bright colors like the, uh, you know, any type of the yellows or the whites, because most of the time what you're going to find in floating worms is they work best um, early in the season or late in the fall. And the, the brighter the color, the more aggressive the fish are towards the bait and the bigger fish that you catch on there. You know, I use a lot of different colors even more green pumpkins and stuff at times, but we'll get into that at a later video. But I just want to show you how I set it up. And first of all, let's talk about the rigging a little bit. Um, you know, everybody that follows me knows that I'm not a braid to fluorocarbon guy, but this is one situation I do use braid to fluorocarbon. I fish all my floating worms on a spinning rod. And I'm telling you guys what, just like I talk about jerk baits, you need to be throwing a spinning rod on a floating worm because you can make longer casts, you can get more action out of the bait. You can manipulate it and you can fight the fish better. You can skip it underneath stuff. Get rid of your, if you fish float norms on a bait caster, stop it. Go to your seven foot, you know, I use the Mega Bass uh, Shaky Head Special seven foot rod. Go to a seven foot spinning rod and it's going to be a lot better setup for you. But how I start out is I, I start out with a 15 pound test Seaguar uh, Smackdown uh, leader. Uh, this is the braid. This is a stealth gray, a 15 pound test. I like the 15 pound test because it's strong and I can also cast it a long way. And with that, I'm using a, a liter of eight pound test Seaguar and Vizex line. Sometimes I'll go to 10, but I like to have eight. But the key thing on there is the barrel swivel between the two. 
you've got to use a barrel swivel on a floating worm because if you don't, it's gonna twist your line like crazy. Another advantage of the barrel swivel is it gives you more distance on the cast, but the main reason I like a barrel swivel, besides the fact that it helps from twisting your line, is it allows that bait to sink, it allows the, the, the float worm to sink down a little bit. If you want to get that bait down, um, the float, the uh, barrel swivel will add some more weight to it. And I like to use a fairly large one. You can see that size there. So I use a fairly large barrel swivel. Another thing on here, knots is important. You've got, you've got three knots to tie on this setup. You've got your braid to the uh, swivel knot, which I use a Palomar knot. And then uh, actually I use a double Palomar. And then on the uh, uh, fluorocarbon uh, to the barrel swivel, I use a double fluorocarbon too. And then on my hook, I've got a, uh, the, the, um, the uh, double uni knot on the hook. Leader length on there, I like anywhere between say 12 to 18 inches on there. What this does is that it separate, the 12 to 18 inches will separate um, my, you know, leader material from my main line. And it also allows for, you know, pretty easy casting distance. Now the hook setup on the thing, there, I use two different type of hooks. And um, I'll uh, talk about that here a little bit, but the main hook that I use, is the uh, Gamagatsu G Finesse uh, straight shank hook. I'm getting it just one second. I've got to get, grab another hook here. And the reason I like the straight shank hook is it makes the bait work a little bit better in the water. And so I use the straight shank G Finesse Gamagatsu hook. And one of the big keys on a floating worm, and this is something that I've experimented over and over again, and it's, it's, what if the, one of the reasons you'll lose a lot of fish on a floating worm that I found out is people tend to use too big hooks on it. They'll use like a three or four odd hook in a floating worm. And I found out that going to that little one odd hook, you land so many more fish. That there's just something about it. It's like when they get that in their mouth and you pull into that fish, it just gets them in more places and you don't have to have the, the pressure to penetrate a three or four odd hook. I've lost so many fish on bigger hooks, and ever since I went to that little one knot, you know, I started getting a lot better hookups. Okay, let's start out, you know, with the first modification I want to talk about. On the trick worm here, uh, just from the factory, the first thing you want to do is just clip off a little bit, you know, just like an eighth of an inch off the end of it, because that gives you a good uh, flat surface to put your hook into. And here's the main modification. This is the one that I'm going to share with you guys. It's the big deal is you want to take your floating worm, take a pair, a sharp pair of scissors, and begin cutting the middle of the worm. And I like to cut this as, about as far up as I can go in it. You know, nor, nor, normally I go up, you know, maybe, you know, inch and a half, two inches. Something like that. Whoops. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, I just messed up there, but I had another one here. So, anyway, let me, let me start cutting this again. I'm separating this bottom tail here, cutting up about two inches like that. So I've got a little forked tail on there. Now what this does is when you're working that bait through the water, this forked tail gives the bait a completely different profile. It actually gives like a little visual, tri visual strike uh, bonus to the fish. I'm not sure what it is, but ever since I started splitting the tails at the bottom, I get a lot more strikes on this, on a floating worm like that. Not to say they won't hit it regular because they'll hit it good, you know, not doing that, but it will definitely add up to some more fish. Another thing, and this is one of the most important things in rigging it, is when you're rigging the floating worm, you know, on the zoom, you've got the flat side right there, and then you've got sort of the rib side on there. You always want to come, my glasses on here, you always want to come in on the, this side of the worm right here, not the flat side of the worm. It's very important to get the bait running right. So what I want to do is I want to come through. And when you come through, here's another thing on there. When you come through, make sure that your point of your hook is close to the top of the bait right there. Because don't, don't put it like right through the middle of it. Because if you put it through the middle of it, you'll have more plastic in the way between the hook point and the worm. So try just to go right along the top of it as much as you can. And this is this requires going really slow. And I'm 
pushing that worm. I'm, I'm just trying to get it just below the surface of the worm. And this is gonna give me a, a lot more bite gap with my hook. And it's little stuff like that that keeps those fish from jumping off. And what I wanna do is I wanna come all the way through, see the, the bottom of the egg sac there? I wanna, I wanna pull that hook point out right at the bottom of the egg sac on this worm, like that. So come up with it. You need to go really slow with this because it's important to rig it straight. Come up. So we got it like that. So what this does is you've got a completely open hook. It's a light fine wire hook on there. And this is surprisingly weedless. I throw this is how I throw the bait probably, I'm gonna guess 90% of the time, even around cover, because I'm trying to pull those bass out from cover. If I'm fishing this thing around docks or laydowns, stumps, whatever. I'm not throwing it right into the middle of it most of the time, trying to come around the edges of it to get those fish to come out. But what happens is you've got that light wire exposed hook in there. And when those bass get it, you know, all you do is just pull into them. You don't set the hook, let them swim with it. Never set the hook right off the bat on the floating worm. Um, if you see them bite the thing, let them swim four or five feet with it and just pull into them and you'll land a lot more fish. So that's the main rig that I use right there. One out hook, got my barrel swivel like that onto my braid floor carbon. <clears throat> now, let's say for example, that I'm fishing around grass or I'm fishing around some thick laydowns or something like that where I want the, you know, I'm trying to throw the bait in cover and, you know, have a chance to get hung up. That is when I'll use Texas rig and EWG. Again, I'm using a small hook. This is a two out hook with that. You can get away with a little bit bigger hook on the, uh, the when you're Texas rigging it because a lot of times you're in heavier cover. And when I'm Texas rigging it in heavier cover, that's when I'll upgrade my line size. I'll go to 20 pound test braid, maybe 10 to 12 pound test fluorocarbon leader. And it's the same way on, on this particular thing. You have to rig it just right, but you rig it backwards. Instead of coming through the top, the, the rib side like that, you know, with the straight shank hook, when you're hooking it with the EWG, you need to come to the flat side. So what I'll do is come, you know, about a quarter of an inch through the end. <clears throat> all the way through. And when I come all the way through, I want to leave just a little bit of crook on the thing like that. I don't hook it back in the middle. It's just laying right across the top like that. A little bit of crook like that. And this allows the bait to sort of, you know, walk like a zero spook a little bit more if you put just a little bit of a crook in it like that. So that's the way that I rigged the, the Texas rig model. So anyway, <coughs> those are some, doesn't sound like it, <coughs> but those are some key tips like that. It's all, it's all about a system. The float and rig, uh, or the, the, the float and worm uh, setup that I just described to you is a system. Everything that I have shown you right there has come about from years and years of trial and error and experimentation. You know, the braid to fluorocarbon, the size of the barrel swivel, the type of knot, the type of hook, the color of float and worm, you know, flaring the ends of the float and worm out like that. This is something that has just came from, you know, fishing the bait for, you know, close to 40 years. I mean, I fished it, you know, ever since they came out. One other way that you can rig it, which works really good, is you can wacky rig a float and worm and I do that sometimes too, where I just hook it straight in the middle of the bait and just wacky rig and a bright colored floating worm will also work really good. But uh, anyway, we'll get into more conditions later, but this bait's gonna be coming up just right around the corner. I start throwing it when that, when that water temperature starts getting in the mid fifties, I start throwing the floating worm and, I, and I'll throw it all year long up until you know, the water gets below 55 degrees in the fall. And one of the things I can tell you right now about the floating worm, is when they very first start getting on it. And this is, this is another big key that's really, you know, it's sort of a secret that I haven't told a lot of people is I throw the float and worm before most people think they're gonna bite it. You know, most people think it's like a spring spawning type bait, but I'll start throwing it, like I said, if, if, I have a, if it's late winter, early spring, and we've had some warm days and that water temps are starting to, to warm up into the 50s, 
and those fish are starting to move up a little bit shallower, I'll throw that floating worm. And you'll find out without exception that early in the year before anyone else has thrown it, that's when you catch your biggest bass on it because they get conditioned to this thing pretty quick. You know, it telegraphs itself. They're really bright. They get educated to it. They start seeing it around the lake too much. So if you start throwing it a little bit early in the year, you know, you're going to be surprised at how many big bass you catch on it and that show themselves on it too. Because a lot of times on a floating worm, you know, they show themselves on the bait like they do a big swim bait, but they won't bite it. And that's when you can get into some color modifications and different different type of retrieves that we'll talk about in later videos. But anyway, that's that's today's video, guys. Guys, um, like I said, that's I didn't really want to talk about this one too much because, man, this is this is a true secret that I use in fishing a lot, and uh, one of my favorite ways to fish. I a, a floating worm bite is when you can see them bite the thing. It's one of my favorite ways to catch them because you know, they hit it a lot of different ways. Sometimes they'll just swim up real slow behind it and just grab it and take it down. Sometimes they'll nail it like a topwater. You know, sometimes they hit it where you can't see it. It's just a really fun bait to fish. But we'll be back. I'll do two or three more videos on floating worms with some more details on it. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, like the video. And um, like I said, appreciate you guys continuing to tune in. You know, channel's going really good. You know, getting some good subscriber numbers, getting a lot of views. And um I just really appreciate it, guys. And if you guys like it, you know, hey, you know, share it with your friends, man. Share these videos with your friends and, you know, help me grow a little bit more to appreciate that. So talk to you guys later. We'll be back tomorrow with another one. See you.